Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to do a Logic Pro benchmark for the MacBook Air M3, the Mac Mini M4, the MacBook Pro M4 Pro, and the MacBook Pro M4 Max. So that's what we're going to look for in this video. And if you go to music-prod.com slash logic benchmark, you will get this list here with all of the systems that are tested. And these results are both from me and my team here at Music Prod, as well as you users here. So you can see if you comment here, you have a long list with a lot of different results. But we have taken all of these results here and made a benchmark list here. So you can see we have the MacBook Air M3 with 16 GB of RAM, 132 tracks. So you can see it's the same as the Mac Mini M4, we will get to that later on here. But it's also, let's see here, M3, that's, you can see here it's better than, let's say, Mac Pro from 2013, that's an old computer. But it's also better than the MacBook Air M1, but not by that much. So MacBook Air M3, it's not really recommended for music production. It's going to perform good, but it's not like a pro machine. And it's not supposed to be that as well, but... For the MacBook Air M3, it's not something that you want to look for if you're going to manage a lot of different tracks and uh, yeah, just want to max out your system. All right, so here we have the MacBook Air 13 inch M3 CPU. And as you can see, I'm just going to set everything up here. So the IO buffer size is on the maximum. I also set the processing threads to the maximum here. And let's see how this benchmark goes. So here we have the performance meter and I'm just going to activate uh, most of the tracks here. So we have, uh, let's see, we have 128 tracks. So first let's see if it's going to play that. So let's unmute those and let's see how that plays. So you can see it immediately goes to very high there, but it still plays it. So let's duplicate some tracks. All right, so let's try, let's see here. Let's try about 130 something tracks. 135 is giving us system overload, but let's delete some of the tracks here, just so the tracks are active with regions in them. And now let's see here, performance meter. No, it's giving us a system overload for the MacBook Air. So let's delete some tracks, 133, it's giving us system overload as well. And here you can see 131 tracks is being played without any hiccups. So let's do it, let's duplicate one track and let's see 132. Yeah, that gives us system overload. So for this system, we're getting 131 tracks. Okay, so let's take a look at the Mac Mini with the M4 CPU here. You can see it has 16 gigabytes of RAM as well. So let's take a look at this one. And as usual, we have our 120 tracks. So let's enable them. And let's see how this goes. Let's play this. And as you can see, it plays it through, but it's already pretty maxed out here. So let's duplicate some tracks. Let's do about 133 tracks and it gives us already system overload. So I'm going to take away some tracks here, 129 tracks. Okay, it plays, plays it through. So let's go back to our 130 something tracks here. So duplicate 133 and that is playing through. So 135, let's see 135 here. Yeah, that gives us system overload. So something about around 134 tracks for the Mac Mini M4, which is similar to the MacBook Air with the M3 CPU. So that's kind of interesting. We have a, a very small difference uh, between the M3 and the M4 CPUs. That's not something that I that I thought would be happening. So, so yeah, so that's very interesting. Okay, so let's take a look at the next system. And by the way, if you're working in Logic Pro and want to level up your skills, I've created a full program called Logic Pro Academy. It's a 12-week personalized program where I record custom tutorials just for you, straight from Avicii's old studios in Stockholm, Sweden. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced producer, this program is designed to help you create professional quality music at your own pace. And if you prefer a self-paced 
approach, I've also got tons of Logic Pro courses on Udemy, covering everything from workflows to mixing and mastering. You can find links to Logic Pro Academy and all my Udemy courses in the description below, or go to these links showed here on the screen. All right, so here we have the MacBook Pro with the regular M4 CPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So let's take a look at it and see if it's... Yeah, if it's a difference between the Mac Mini with the same CPU or if it's any difference there. So let's take a look here. 128 tracks, plays just like it should. So let's do some more tracks here. Let's test about 143 tracks. And that plays it through. So there is some difference there between the regular M4 in the Mac Mini and the MacBook Pro with the same CPU. That's kind of strange. I didn't think it was going to do that, but yeah, we see 152 tracks. Okay, that gives us system overload. So let's go back some tracks here and let's play through here and let's see 145 tracks. Okay, that plays it through. So compared to the M4 in the Mac Mini, that gives us a bit of a difference there. Okay, so 144 tracks is giving us system overload as well. Let's hear. No, okay, it plays it through. So 144 tracks for the MacBook Pro with the M4 CPU. Let's go to the next system. Okay, so here we have the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the M4 Pro CPU and 24 gigabytes of RAM. So here you can see there's a lot more tracks already in this here and we have 277 tracks and it plays it through. So this is amazing. It's kind of crazy how big of a difference there is between the regular M4 and the M4 Pro. So the M4 Pro, it's not like a huge difference in price, but still you can see already places more than double the tracks. I know that there's a lot of different things as well you can benchmark for Logic Pro, but this is a pretty good benchmark test and that is the result for the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the M4 Pro CPU. Let's go to the next system. Okay, so for this system, you can see here we have the Apple M4 Max CPU with 36 gigabytes of RAM. So let's see how many tracks this system can do. So as we know, it's going to make more than 280 something tracks. So I'm going to duplicate a lot of tracks here. Okay, so let's try the 268 tracks just to see. Yeah, you can see it's not even maxed out at all. So we're going to get a lot more tracks here. Let's do 300 something. Let's see here, let's do 311 tracks. Let's see how that performs. Okay, so it's starting to max out a bit, but it still plays it through. So I'm going to duplicate a lot more tracks here just to try to max it out. Let's see here, 334 tracks. Let's see. And it plays it through. <laughs> so 334 tracks and it's not even getting us any system overloads yet. So let's try and duplicate even more tracks here. I'm going to do something crazy here and go way above and beyond. <laughs> 368 tracks. Let's try this. I don't think it's going to play through these many tracks. I don't think so. 368. That would be a record. Uh, does, no, system overload. So yeah, uh, it's still a lot of tracks. Let's see how many tracks it can actually play without any hiccups. 359, that gives us system overload as well. Let's try 357 tracks, system overload. Okay, so let's delete some tracks here. 350, system overload as well. Let's see, 340. That's place it through. So it's somewhere around 340 to 350 tracks that's going to be played. That's a lot. That's a lot of tracks. So the M4 Max, if you really want uh, a crazy kind of setup here for Logic Pro, then it's going to be the M4 Max CPU, obviously. But it's, I don't think it's necessarily to have this kind of power <laughs> in a laptop here. But yeah, that's actually ranked as our second power, most powerful system for the Macs that's ever been made. So if you really want a very, very powerful computer, then the M4 Max is what you should get. Let's just take a look at the list again. Okay, so we tested the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M4 Max CPU, and that gave us 344 tracks. We also had a user that submitted this test here, and where that user got 370 tracks on an M3 Max system. So that's one year older system. And that person got, you can see, 
many more tracks there. But it can be because of the RAM, of course, because we had 32 gigabytes of RAM here, and this is 128 gigs of RAM. And of course, if you start to duplicate a lot of different tracks, then it's going to be stored in the RAM. So I think that would be why the numbers of tracks are higher here than in the M4 Max. But we'll never know yet, right? So, but it's still very, very high. You can see it compared to the Max Studio with the M2 Ultra. It's compared to the, let's see here, the Mac Pro, Pro from 2019. That was a very, very powerful machine. Yeah, so it's it's up in the like absolutely highest class. And that's for a portable system as well. That's kind of crazy. But other than that, we had the, let's see here, we had a Mac Mini M4, right? And that should be somewhere around here. Yes, Mac Mini M4, 16 gigabytes of RAM. The regular M4, not the M4 Pro. That gives us 133 tracks. Unfortunately, I didn't have the Mac Mini M4 Pro system, but I think it's going to be something like the Mac Pro M4 Pro, which gives us a very, very nice result here with 286 tracks. So if, you, if you're looking for a Mac Mini, then I would get the M4 Pro Mac Mini and not the M4 Mac Mini because... That one, you can see it gives kind of low result here for the benchmark. Same thing goes with the MacBook Air M3, 132 tracks. I will not get that if you're really serious about music production. But other than that, all of the M systems are really good to work with in music production. So even though you're getting like an M3 or even an M M2, it's still going to be a very good system for music production. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope to see you in another one.